Pat with Pat's Two Cents, <clears throat> and we're going to read Joshua 1. Joshua 1 says, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to you, to them, <laughs> even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as, listen, listen, this is my favorite line in this chapter. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. <clears throat> All right, listen. <clears throat> All right, I want you to hear the, the thing I love about that scripture, when he says, as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. When I read it earlier, there was another chapter that I had also read. And it said, God is with you. It, that thing just broke me down and made me cry. And the reason is because for me, there is no better comfort than to know that God is not only for me, but he's right here with me. He's with me in everything, no matter what happens, good, bad, or indifferent. God is with me. Have you ever heard a friend or a loved one say, I'm with you in this. You're not alone. I got you. I got your back. I'm right here by your side. There's something so comforting and reassuring to know that God, can be right there with every single individual that believes and trusts in him. He's everywhere at once. He's with everybody at the same time. And I love that about him. It's such a feeling of comfort to know I could think a thought, feel a feeling, say a word, and every time he hears me. There have been times where I felt a certain way and didn't even say it. And God would lead me to scripture. I'd just sit down and cry. And Lord, I need you to lead me to scripture. <clears throat> and God would lead me to scripture as if we were having an ongoing dialogue. And he would address the very thing that had me tied up in knots. I, and then I'd get untied just like that. It, he's so comforting. He's, su he's such a present help. He's such a close, dear friend. He's compassionate. He's tender. Ah, okay. I'm trying not to get emotional. He's tender. He's loving. He's, he's, he's aware of everything that we're going through, good, bad, or indifferent. We're never alone in any part of it. Never alone. He is with us. Oh, if you could get how with you he really is. He is with you. He's mindful of you. Wow. Okay. Help me, Lord. Try not to get emotional. All right. I'm going to read Psalms 122. That's one of the 
chapters the Lord led me to and um, <clears throat> try to get my composure. <laughs> All right. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compacted together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord, for they are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren's companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because the house of the because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Did you notice there was a central vein in this one, as well as Joshua chapter one? In Joshua chapter one, which I did not point out <laughs> because I wanted to read that one first. Uh and I got caught up in what I was saying about God Himself. I actually almost forgot about the prosperity part. But the thing I love about in verse, I want to make sure I'm reading the right verse, verse 7 and 8 in Joshua 1. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That right there tells me, Whatever you plan to do, whatever is within my will, you stay with me, it's going to turn out good. The book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, this book of the Lord, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, God is not a God of poverty. God is not a, a God of just wanting people to live a downtrodden life and all of that. When he said he wants us to live the abundant life, that's internally and externally. So we're not talking, we're not preaching a prosperity gospel. Everything works in our favor after a while. Yes, we all have to go through tests, trials, lessons, challenges, setbacks, delays, cancellations even. But the bottom line is it's all a learning and a growing process. And then there comes periods in our lives when God says time. And he says the set time to favor her has come. The set time has come. And for some of you, God's time is right now. He wants to favor some of you. There are those of you who are in the body of Christ. There are people who walk with God, talk with God. They think about Him. They, everything they do is based on how would God feel if I did this, said that, thought this, felt that. And there are those who don't really give a you-know-what. And God knows who really cares about what he thinks about what they're doing. Not what he thinks. He knows. He doesn't have to think. But because he's mindful of us, he's totally aware. And we have to remember that whatever we do, being in his favor, I call it being on his good side. God is working things out for us. He's working things out in, under, under the soil. He's working things out in the atmosphere. He's working things out in the dark, in the back, in the corner of the dark. Mm -hmm. And there are times when he's working out solutions to some of your quandaries, and you think God's forgotten about you. More than likely, you may have forgotten about him, but he has not forgotten about you because that's not the kind of God he is. So some of you, and I, I see it coming together now. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are dealing with uh, conflicts. You're dealing with 
confrontations and issues with different types of people. And you're thinking, why is God allowing this to happen? Well, yeah, sometimes he's got to allow the thunder and lightning to bring about the rain. But the rain is not a bad thing. It may not be convenient. It may make you wet. And for some of you, it may spoil your pretty hairdo or your handsome cut. But rain is a necessity. And it is a good thing. Just like some of the challenges in our lives are learning, uh, they're learning uh, sessions. Sometimes we need to learn about ourselves. We need to understand why we do this, why we do that. What made me make that choice? What is going on inside of me? What is my real motive? Like some of you who may be battling with pride and you're not aware of it or you don't want to admit it. And you are trying to work out situations, but you only go so far because you're not going to ask for help. You're not going to reach out and say, I need. You're not going to go here or go there and get all you can get. You're going to sit and chase your tail and get nowhere for I don't know how long because you're too proud to ask. And the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And some of you are asking not because of your pride. So that's the thing I love about God. He's working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And his good pleasure is for us to enjoy the abundant life. That includes and is first and foremost love, peace, joy, confidence, contentment, satisfaction, thankfulness, mercy. That's the abundant life. Do you hear what I'm saying? The extra goodies and the extra benefits are divine protection, favor, provision. God knows how to take care of you and me. And there are some of you who are in a conflicting situation on your job. You got people that are rising up with attitudes. They, they're talking about you. I'm seeing this in my mind. They're talking about you behind your back. And you know it. You're very much aware of it. And you're fighting tooth and nail not to get caught up in the frenzy of wrath. Not to get caught up in the he say, she say stuff. Not to get caught up in tit for tat. You tell me off, I'll tell you all. I'll tell you a little bit about yourself that you don't want anybody to know. And since you made my stuff public, I'll announce it on the front page. So sometimes when you're going through conflict like that, and you're being attacked or you're under attack, and you can't figure out what's it all about, Alfie, I didn't do anything to them. God may be saying, that's not the point. The point is, it takes friction to bring about a shine. You cannot polish anything without the friction. And God is polishing you so that you reflect his light so brightly. But the only way to reflect his light like a diamond dazzles in the sunlight or under certain types of bright light is if God gets rid of the inclusions and the clouds and the scratches and the, and the, the, the um, blemishes in your spirit. And once he starts removing those blemishes out of your spirit, while he's working on you, he's working on behalf of you. As you go down the road, he's preparing the way. But while he's preparing the way, he's preparing you for the way. And there will come a time when he says, forget those things that are behind. Don't look at those things of the past. I'm doing a new thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And God will let you know what he's doing. But right now, right now, you got to pray your way through some of this friction which is part of your preparation 
part of the areas in you that need to grow. Part of the areas in you God wants to take out to the trash. Because some of you don't realize that the reason some types of people or some types of, of conflicts or some types of problems on the job get on your last reserve nerve is because there's something twisted inside of your spirit that once God removes that, you'll find far less things bugging you, far less people getting under your skin, far less people getting on that last nerve. Because what happens is the more God removes you out of the picture, the more, the quicker that nerve dies and it's not so sensitive and flinchy and you're not so easily upset, not easily be, be, uh, I'm trying to make up a word, be grumpled. <laughs> so understand that God, he knows you have a good heart, but he knows you have some bad flesh. I have bad flesh. There's nobody on this planet that does not have bad flesh because flesh is bad. That's all there is to it. Carnality is enmity against God. And God wants to give you all that he has for you. But he's got to get rid of so much of you and get you out of the way first. Because right now, some of you are in the way of your blessing. Some of you are in the way of your progress. Because you won't humble yourself and do what you need to do to get all that you can get. Because you're too proud. And you know God doesn't like pride. Now for some of you, you're intolerant to certain types, certain uh, types of problems, certain types of challenges. Some things you just, uh-uh, no, 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 I'm not dealing with that. No, I'm not even wasting my breath. I do not have the time. Mm. And you're sitting there freezing yourself because you just you just don't want to hear it. You don't want to deal with it. You don't want to know about it. Just 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 move it on. You know, keep it moving. I I, I just don't want to deal with that. Well, sometimes God wants you to deal not just with that, but this that's in here that's so annoyed. Why? Hmm. Yeah. And see, some of the attacks that are going on in your life, God's got all the attacks under control. He knows how to remove the enemy completely out of the picture. He knows how to remove the person the enemy is using. Because remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and so on. So when you look at the person, you have to remember there's a spirit behind that person. And it is the devil and the demon's job to make life hard on this earth. But God makes a way of escape. And you have to ask that much more, that much more frequently. Lord, help me through this. Help me see myself as well. Help me see how at, at one, it, how am I part of this problem? How am I creating more of a problem than it needs to be? What am I doing that's not helping this thing just go away? And what do I need to do? To make it go away. Now, some of you, I'm going to tell you one of the things you might not want to do because you may not be in the wrong at all. You may be totally in the right, but you will find that you will be a wonderful witness if you can humble yourself and at times, not all the time, but at times, you know, somebody's bugged by you mm, and you may not know why. But you notice there's always an issue with you and them, you and them. And they, they think you're doing this or thinking that, or you have this attitude. And you may, you may not. But it may behoove you to go to them and say, if I've offended you, please forgive me. I really didn't mean to. And don't say it with a snide attitude. Don't say it with a uh, looking down your nose like, okay, I said I'm sorry. Are you happy, Lord? No, uh-uh. Say it with genuine. You have to see whatever you do, you have to do out of the motivation of love. You have to love them enough to say, I want to win them over to the Lord. 
So how can I humble myself in a way to make myself more approachable to them? So if there is a problem, we can resolve it right here on the spot. And I will not let my pride rise up and make me defend myself. I'll listen. Because we don't always see how we come across to other people. I was telling, I think I told Peter a long time ago, we were talking about something. And I said, you know, sometimes you don't realize people can look at you and you can actually be intimidating. You're quiet. You, you know, you're self-contained. And they might be thinking, oh, he's thinking all this about me. And you're, and you're not. But you have that, that persona that could give people that, that impression. So there are times, I know for me, I joke a lot. And I can make people think I'm making fun of them or putting them down. The Lord had to back me up off of that a lot. You have no idea how much of my joking I have cut completely out of the picture. And I still joke. But man, I was a real jokester. You think I'm nauseating now? Know me 20 years ago. Woo! I was a big pill to swallow, y'all. Gag you right down. So God had to show me the areas that I had to curtail. And he let me know in scripture, I gave you the joy. I gave you the sense of humor. Don't apologize for it. Just out of your love for others. Sense when they're overly sensitive. And when you notice that they're not quite receptive, back off, quickly apologize, let them know, oh, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings, I'm just playing. And then back off of the joking. Because they may not be honest with you and say, this is hurting and that's hurting, ouch, ouch, ah, ooh. No, they may not let you know, but that's building up inside of them. And that's causing friction, or it can cause friction, or it can cause them to back up from you, and you might be the only connection they have to God. So God showed me through love that how I had to relate to other people in a way that I wasn't so important in the picture, but I had to prefer them over me because I know I'm playing, but so many people are wounded in the core. And you can't play with everybody that way. You just can't do it. I had a friend years ago. I used to call her grandma all the time. Now, I'll tell you where that came from. Uh, some of you may know me from years ago. And you know I'm good at calling folks grandma, even if they're only 16 years old. I had a roommate years ago when I was 20, 27, 28. And she used to call me grandma. I was, yeah, I was about 28. She used to always call me grandma. I thought that was the cutest thing. It was just adorable to me. So I adopted it and I started doing it too because I thought it was cute. Well, I realized some women don't like being called grandma because they're not, how can I say, they don't want to come to grips with the fact or the possibility that they might be getting a year or a day older. So even if, I can't tell you how many women have told me, I'm not a grandma, I don't have any grandkids. And I'm like, okay, I'm just joking, no problem. I had to shut that one down real quick. So see, it's an interpersonal thing. We're constantly bouncing off of all different types of personalities with all different types of issues, all different types of history. Oh my goodness, we have no idea. We have no idea what could offend somebody. I'm going to share you something that offended me. And that was a color issue. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're not aware when we're dealing with people of different persuasions that different groups have different woundings that come up through their lineage almost because of the type of abuse that's been done to them for so many years. And it may not have been done to them personally, but trust me, if the family, if your if your uh, elders in you know your your matriarchs or whatever have issues, some of it's gonna bleed onto you. It's just gonna happen. It's like somebody getting cut and you try to, you know, dress the wound, you get a little blood on you. There's some things that are going to get on you. And, and one of the things that I noticed, I was at a church. 
and I'm just trying to make this practical. This won't be long. Interpersonal uh, relationships and God wanting to bless us in spite of the friction and the conflict. I was, um, I had just, we had a racial reconciliation night at Harvest Rock Church. And I was the one that represented the black race. And when I got through saying what I said, Mother Nature called and I had to go pay my water bill real quick. So I'm heading, um, I, I go to the restroom and I'm coming out of the restroom and now I'm heading back to, to, to where, you know, the audience is and I'm backstage, so to speak. And a lady was coming to the restroom and she had a few women with her. Uh, she was a Caucasian woman. And she said, and she gave me a compliment. She really did. But I'm going to tell you how I felt about it. And to help you understand how the little intricacies of people's sensitivities, and you may think that's so uncalled for, but guess what? Didn't matter. It was still an issue. All right, listen to this. Uh, and that's why we have to respect people's sensitivities. Um, she stopped me and she said, are you the lady that was up on stage talking for your people? And I said, yes. And she said, oh. You are so articulate. I said thank you out of my mouth, but in my mind, I said, and you are so surprised. Why? I was nice. She didn't know I was thinking that. But see, we have no idea what little buttons are being pushed, even in the midst of giving a compliment. <laughs> You know, I could be talking to a Filipino lady about something and not know I stepped all over her cultural toes. We have no idea how we offend one another. So when conflicts arise, God is not only showing you how to resolve it, he's teaching you more about yourself and he's teaching you more about them if you love them enough to take the time to find out. And the more you learn, that's why the Bible says, uh, you know, get wisdom and with all you're getting, get understanding. I'm telling you, the two go hand in hand, but the understanding is the sweet spot of wisdom. Amen. All right. So now dealing with conflict, you have to pray your, your way through. As they say, think before you speak. I say, pray before you speak. Pray before you think. And then think before you speak. Um, life will be a lot easier on you. There'll be a lot fewer uh, awkward moments when you're on the job, when you're in the house dealing with your brother or sister. And God can teach you through his word. That's why you got to read it now. Proverbs is excellent for that. To teach you how to interact with different people. The Bible will give you etiquette, believe it or not. It'll teach you a little bit about class too, y'all. How to carry yourself with poise in class, with character, with a higher level of character. You don't have to be a low life unless you choose to be. All right. So that being said, God has lined up all kind of blessings, benefits, and prosperities, and, and all kind of promotional levels coming from one stage to the next, to the next, to the next. But there'll be some things we don't get to experience if we don't humble ourselves. That's where we have to be careful. We have to walk in love. We have to pursue peace with all men. and. We will be surprised all the blessings God can give us. The, the, uh, the scripture, I mean, not the scripture, the thought that popped in my head when as soon as I asked the Lord, what would you want me to deal with today? I heard rags to riches. And see, we can live a raggedy life all we want for as long as we want. And a raggedy life is not just a life of getting high, getting drunk, screwing around, hanging out all night at the nightclubs, messing with other people's husbands, wives, you know, going, you know, both ways, whatever way. No, <sighs> having fights and, and at the okay corral. Listen, living a raggedy life 
is living a low order, uh, the life of a low order soul. In other words, everything is carnal. Everything's a confrontation. Everything's a fight. Everything's an attitude. Everything gets on your nerves. Everybody gets on your nerves. You don't have time for this. You don't have time for that. You got to get them told. You got to get them back. And everything is it's a big deal. Everything's a big deal. Life's a big deal. Ah, 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 ah. And that's the way you feel every day, all day, every day. That's not the peace of God, y'all. That's living life through your emotions. That's perceiving life through your emotions and reacting to it through your emotions. That's making matters worse. So you have to constantly pray to God, take authority, shut yourself down, go in the back room, get that word, calm your spirit. Lord, give me a scripture. Talk to me, calm me down. I'm acting a behind out here. I'm not representing you. I'm representing my behind. And this is ugly. Help me. You'd be surprised what God will start to do the more you lean on him with every moment. And I'm going to tell you this. Obedience is half your battle. Because if God says handle it this way, like at times when I wanted to, you know, give somebody a piece of my mind and let them know you don't talk to me, you don't treat me like God says, shut up. I'll fight. I'll handle them. You go do your business. You take care of my business. I'll take care of your business. Shut up and go. And get that attitude out your spirit. I'm right here to clean it out. I'm right here. All you got to do is ask. Lean on me for that. You're not handling that well. And you will find the more and the quicker you obey God, the quicker you grow. The quicker you grow, the quicker you get to blessing number one, blessing number two, phase number three, favor number four, prosperity number five. Things start falling into place. Why? Because you spent all your energy trying to line up with God, doing it God's way. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? You tried to do everything According, you didn't do it all the time because none of us do it all the time, but you tried hard and God recognizes your effort. Remember that he has not forsaken your labor of love or he has not forgotten your labor of love. So know that God has plans for you. He knows the plans he has for you. To bless you and not harm you, to give you a hope and an expected in the future. So know this, God is working on your behalf while he's working on you and working everything for your good. The good and the bad, he's working it for your good. So you're never going to lose unless you choose to lose and lose ugly. You hear what I'm saying? So whatever you do, make sure you lean on God because God has some blessings for his people coming up now. I don't know what they are, but to see all these scriptures talking about prosperity, and I'm not a prosperity preacher, I'm not. But to see all this, God has some stuff in store for us. I'll let you know what happens with me. I don't know. And, you know, and some of the people in our group will let us know what happens with them. And I'll put that on video, but expect something unexpected. Start looking for some surprises from God. Those of you who are really trying to stay in your lane, on the straight and narrow, in his favor, in his will, in the center of his will, those of you who are pursuing righteousness on hot pursuit, you're pursuing his his favor, his pleasure with hot pursuit out of a heart of love and gratitude, worship, God will. He'll start blessing a lot of his people right in through here. Start looking over the next five or six months. Start looking for some surprises because there's something coming. I don't know what it is, but there's some good stuff coming, y'all. So prepare. Prepare your attitude. Prepare your spirit. Prepare yourself so that you can receive. Don't get caught up in lies. Don't try to manipulate things in your favor. If things look like you're losing on this end, 
put it in God's hands and keep your hands off of it and let it go. Because if God allows you to lose one thing, he's got something so much better over here. Whether it's a person, a thing, a circumstance, a position, whatever, or an aspiration, God's got something better. Let him set the stage. And now you get your hands off of it. Quit manipulating, all right? All right. God bless you. Be encouraged. God is for you. God is with you. God is a very present help. Amen. Amen.